Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to, oh yeah, the Game and Friday, August 18th, 2017 edition of VR News. And before we jump into the news, just want to quickly talk about a VR game, the Soul Keeper VR. A few people wondering why the game hasn't been posted yet, and I've been pretty radio silent on it the last two games, other than a couple of tweets to the developer. Simple fact is, there were bugs. While I was doing a quick look, I ran into multiple showstoppers. Now, I know what I get into with an early access. Some early access can be tight as hell, and it's simply content and additional levels, etc., that are missing. Others are essentially in an alpha slash beta state, and the community becomes part of the development process. Put the Soul Keeper VR kind of in the latter, not the former, and... I wasn't prepared to be a tester. I was hoping for the former, right? Not the case. So nobody wants to watch 20, 30 minutes of bugs. And believe me, there were showstoppers. And being a game tester in the past, it's one of those things I can't avoid. It's like a dead pixel. I start just autopiloting into them and it was a mess. So I did something I don't do lightly. I refunded the game. 300 plus games on Steam the third game that I've ever refunded. Like I said, I don't do it lightly. The price kept bothering me, and that's a personal decision for everybody, but for me, $40 for basically being a bug tester, not what I wanted to sign up my $40 for. I wanted that $40 to provide entertainment for viewers, and thus I refunded it, got Killing Floor Incursion, and definitely not only saved a few bucks, but got my money's worth with a really tight, fun game. Going to revisit the Soul Keeper, but I'm going to let it go through some development first and probably snag it at a discounted price in a future sale. All right, with that said, let's dive into the news, starting with another VR game. This one from Chinese game studio Keen Vision. They announced their first PlayStation VR game. They're calling it Soul Dimension. This is a puzzle horror game. And based on the description given by Upload VR, you play the part of a man named Paul who has the ability to enter dreams. Now, the article didn't talk about this, but for me, it immediately started to sound a lot like A Nightmare on Elm Street, where Freddy Krueger, who's the serial killer in that movie, which was a book, uh, he's basically a dream demon capable of killing people in their dreams. Well, you're not exactly killing them, but you are finding out what happens and entering their dream states. Two other games alongside this one shown on their website. Not too much known about that or this game other than the trailer. Hopefully we find out a little bit more, but like I say, puzzle horror game for PlayStation VR. Next story, VR Studios just last month announced their warehouse scale virtual reality tech, but they had no games to showcase it with. So you pretty much had to take them at their word based on some demo code that they were showing. Well, today that ends, they announced their first game. It's called Terminal 17. And as you can see in the video, multiple people are able to share the multiplayer experience. They're tagging it as a combination co-op puzzle and FPS game was built entirely using Unity and NVIDIA VR works. Their tagline for the game reads, Terminal 17 asks an eight player squad to sweep a planetary installation on a distant world and exterminate the insects wreaking havoc there. Along the way, they will encounter puzzles, boss fights, and hidden passages. They currently say there are two episodes available, both of which are gonna release in October of this year to unspecified VR arcade locations. More on that as we get closer to release, I'm sure. And this next story, fellow by the name of Nick Ladd, he's developed this very impressive short bit of animation using just Quill and Anim VR. It's called Escape, and he created this basically in four days. To me, just amazing how far we've come since Deluxe Paint. And if you're old enough to remember Deluxe Paint and the animation studio, well, 
props for that. But uh, for the rest of you, let's just say it's ancient software from the 80s. That was amazing at the time. Well, these tools allow you to do something similar, except in virtual reality. Now, while the experience is viewed as a 2D experience, all the assets used are fully 3D and VR. So you can take any of these scenes, go into VR, rotate them, zoom them, check them out from different angles, probably even turn it into an animated VR experience. The article says that wouldn't be a stretch. One thing to keep in mind, Nick, by his own decree, is an artist, not a programmer. He basically worked uh, 2D, frame by frame, so the animation not in the same league as the art itself, that's the reason why. What's so cool about this to me, and there's gonna be a story at the end of the night we talk about, but is how VR is developing indirectly all these tools, just mind-blowingly cool tools for all kinds of stuff, productivity, gaming, etc. Very awesome. And this next story, Immersive, which itself is a marketing platform, had some really successful Series A funding today, managing to raise 10.5 million in additional investments. That was led by HTC Vive and a bunch of other companies. Immersive saying that they're gonna use those funds in addition to what they've raised and still have to date to further develop their marketing platform. This next story, probably my favorite, Alex from Cybus sent this to me and it blew my mind. Just very impressive. On the surface, you might not be impressed, but you dig a little deeper into the potential of this application called Wrench and it's billing itself as a game. And you can see there's a lot more here beneath the surface. Alex Moody, he's a freelance artist by trade. He developed this. He admits he's not a programmer, but he took this on as a game development project Initially, due to licensing costs, which are new and unknown, he's working with one single kit car model. It's the Bauer LTD Catfish. That is a Mazda Miata-based kit car. Every single part for it, like you see in the video, is going to be scanned for true digital representation, and he's gonna work closely with Bauer along the way to ensure it stays that way. Throughout the various articles that I read on Wrench, they kept throwing the word game around. And maybe because I have a brother who's a mechanic and I've got another brother, a brother-in-law who's a millwright, I just kept seeing potential beyond just it being a mere game. And I say mere for a reason. For example, think about complex 3D printed projects. Just at the most basic, you could include a tutorial document in VR like this where you have the person build the kit virtually before they actually build the real thing. Not only is that going to probably improve stuff getting damaged, uh, it's gonna make the process more efficient, but holy crap, is it a fantastic way to train. And that's where my mind just started racing with possibilities. Ikea and their furniture assembly, just one little piece of that. But thinking beyond that, mill rights, heavy duty mechanics, regular mechanics, the apprenticeship and training programs for all of those. Imagine you're in an economically depressed country or city or region, and you're going to a school that maybe can't afford to buy all this machinery. Maybe they can afford to buy it virtually you could have literally a workforce trained on the most up-to-date equipment. Millwrights assemble. They do troubleshooting, repair, assembly, disassembly. VR could swoop in and just literally revolutionize that. I could see a workforce so modern and powerful as a result of virtual reality software. It just amazes me that the potential for this hasn't been marketed. And that's where I got to circle back, guys. Chalk it up to poor marketing. And I, I can't help but think the reason is a lot of industry professionals in those areas, they tend to be industries that are technologically not backwards, just 
not as advanced. And I know that because I've worked in industries like that. For example, the conveyor belt industry, this company I worked at uh, most recently, they didn't have a lot of technology. They had a lot of skill and know-how, but they didn't have the technology component to complement those business processes. With this type of software and capability with VR, it, the, the possibilities literally are endless. And consider my nerd geek mind just absolutely blown. I know for most of us, gaming is what it's all about. And for me, front and center, first, foremost, absolutely. But the potential for VR, I think, in these other areas is by far, by far the more important one. And, and the one, once the marketing actually kicks into proper gear, is the one that's going to carry VR forward, not gaming. Guys, that's it for the Gaming Friday edition of VR News. Like I said, family, friends, solo, enjoy it. Have a fantastic weekend. We will catch you guys back tomorrow on Saturday. As always, cheers.